Hi, my name is Hendrik and I'm a medical student in Dr. Wan's lab. Today, I'll be presenting my work on the effects of deferoxamine on wound healing in irradiated skin. Radiation is a powerful therapeutic agent often used in the treatment of cancer to prevent cancer recurrence. However, its use also comes with collateral toxicities, which most often affect the skin. Over time, ionizing radiation damage leads to a hypovascular fibrotic dermis that's poorly suited to proper wound healing. <clears throat> Furthermore, irradiation impairs the function of cellular mediators of healing, leading to altered collagen deposition by fibroblasts, impaired contraction by myofibroblasts, and impaired reepithelialization by keratinocytes. Clinically, this delayed healing increases the risk for infection and prolongs the exposure of underlying structures. Despite our better understanding of the pathophysiology of this, treatments have remained elusive. Deferoxamine, or DFO, is an FDA-approved iron chelator that's been shown in prior studies to improve wound healing outcomes. By preventing the degradation of HIF-1-alpha, it potentiates the upregulation of various antigenic genes, and it also minimizes the oxidative damage um, by minimizing the formation of free radicals through uh, eliminating the Fenton reaction. We hypothesize that through these mechanisms, DFO would be able to improve wound healing outcomes in irradiated skin. <clears throat> so how do we go about investigating this? We irradiated the dorsums of wild-type mice with 30 gray, fractionated over six different doses. We let the mice rest for four weeks to allow them to develop chronic fibrosis. These mice were then divided into three treatment groups, an untreated IR control, a vehicle-only patch treatment group, and a DFO-loaded patch treatment group. We then created stented excisional wounds on the dorsums of these mice. <clears throat> and then we also had non-irrated mice um, that served as our normal wound controls. Wounds were photographed and wound perfusion was assessed with a laser Doppler over the course of healing. After healing, scar elasticity was assessed using a suction cutometer and histology was also done on the healed wound specimens. We also harvested wounds at post-op day seven for nitric oxide related assays that I'll go into further detail later. This is all summarized in panel A. So what did we see after we wounded these mice? As you can see from the representative wounds shown in panel B, DFO treatment accelerated the closure of irradiated wounds with a median closure date of post-op day 18. Although still slower than the non-irradiated wounds, which closed around day 14, it was significantly faster than both the IR control and the vehicle-treated IR wounds, which both closed around day 21. The accelerated, wound, uh, the accelerated rate of wound closure held true throughout the course of healing, as you can see from the graph. Notably, DFO also reduced the frequency of healing failure. Vehicle and IR control groups had three out of 10 wounds that failed to heal, while only one irradiated wound failed to heal when treated with DFO. All the non-irradiated wounds fully healed. Notably, um, failure to heal is actually a phenom phenomenon that's been noted clinically in irradiated wounds and thus makes for a pretty interesting observation. Moving on to panel C, laser Doppler readings indicated that DFO treated wounds had higher levels of perfusion that more closely resembled non-irradiated wounds compared to lower perfusion seen in the IR control and vehicle wounds. Representative images of the Doppler scans are shown as well as statistical significance being demonstrated between the perfusion readings taken upon wound healing closure or completed wound healing. To analyze the gross perfusion um, findings microscopically, we assessed the expression of CD31, a marker for endothelial cells in healed wound sections. In panel D, we show that DFO treated wounds exhibited elevated CD31 um, <clears throat> that again more closely uh, resemble the level seen in the non-irradiated wounds, um, whereas the CD31 staining in the IR control and vehicle wounds were significantly lower than both of the DFO and non-irradiated wounds. Moving on to panel E, our H&E staining revealed that DFO treatment increased wound thickness compared to IR control and vehicle wounds, and again, more closely resembled non-irradiated wounds in thickness. And then analysis of Masson's trichrome also showed that DFO increased collagen density in the wound relative to the IR control and vehicle wounds. Their collagen density was again, in fact, more closely representative of that of a non-irradiated wound. In order to investigate these collagen findings, we assessed the wounds for nitric oxide and inducible nitric oxide synthase activity. So prior literature has shown that irradiated wounds suffer from reduced INOS expression and reduced nitric oxide production. Nitric oxide has also been implicated in augmenting collagen synthesis, while INOS is the main source of nitric oxide early uh, in wound healing. Interestingly, the INOS gene promoter has a hypoxia responsive element and prior in vitro studies have shown that DFO can upregulate the INOS gene expression through its effects on HIF-1-alpha. So we found the same to hold true in vivo. In panel F, we showed that the elevated expression um, 
We showed that there was elevated expression of INOS in the DFO treated wounds. And to assess uh, whether this was a functional increase in INOS, quantification of nitric oxide in the wounds did show that DFO wounds had higher levels of NO expression compared to the vehicle and IR control wounds. Lastly, we used PICRO staining to assess the collagen ultrastructure in the healed wound sections via machine learning algorithm. Based on the proximity of clustering seen in panel G, we see that DFO treated irradiated wounds clustered more closely to the non irradiated wounds than the vehicle and the IR control wounds, indicating that they were closer in collagen ultrastructure um, based, as you can see in the representative images. This manifested itself grossly in the form of a more elastic scar in the DFO treated wounds compared to the more stiff scar seen in the vehicle and IR control wounds. And these differences may perhaps explain the difference we saw in non healing as more elasticity probably means better tension offloading and thus reduced strain on the wound throughout the healing time course. So in conclusion, we found that defroxamine accelerated and improved wound healing in a, a, of excisional wounds made on chronically irradiated mirror and skin. Uh, DFO augmented angiogenesis leading to increased blood flow to the healing wound bed. Wounds treated with DFO exhibited improved collagen deposition uh, and improved organization in the healed wound. And overall, um, irradiated wounds treated with DFO more closely resembled non-irradiated wounds, which suggested that DFO may have therapeutic potential in improving outcomes uh, of healing uh, in irradiated wounds. Thank you so much for listening to uh, this presentation. And I also wanted to say thank you to everyone in the Juan and Longacre Lab who helped contribute to this process.